from New York to Dublin to L.A., you are listening to the song The World is a Ghetto by the legendary group War. It's part of an album of the same name that became the top seller of 1973. And in the 50 years since then, war has become an integral part of American culture. And joining us now, co-founding member and principal vocalist of war, Lonnie Jordan. It is so great to have you on the show. John Hellman, why don't you take the first question? Hey, Lonnie, great to see you uh, from a distance. I wish I could be there with you, but um, <laughs> you know, the, I, I, want, I, want to take, I want to take these viewers back to, who are watching the show right now, back to the era of that 50 years ago when, when War is a Ghetto, when the World is a Ghetto came out. You know, you're, you're talking about a time when radio in America was largely segregated. It was very hard for a funk act, a soul act to kind of cross over and become uh, the number one band, the number one album on the pop charts. But you guys came in this in this succession. Curtis Mayfield, 1970, Marvin Gaye with What's Going On in 71. You guys dropped this album in 1972. Just go back. What was it about war that allowed you guys to kind of break out and do a socially conscious record? Only six songs on this album and have it go to number one on the pop charts. Well, we're lucky to get six songs on there because we weren't really that uh, knowledgeable about making music. We were young, dumb and full of fun at the time. And all we were doing was just uh, going in the studio, making records. We didn't even know anything about the studio. We were just uh, having fun. We never thought our music would ever get played on the radio. So what you're talking wow. about as far as the uh, issues that was going on back in, in the day, we weren't familiar with that. We didn't know that was going on, but just DJs. So we just played music, that's all. Solani, not only did you get it done, but this music has has persevered. It's had such staying power. As, as Mika said, you know, it's such an integral part of, of the American culture, part of the fabric, the soundtrack. Uh, what is that, as you reflect back on those 50 years, yeah. what is that like, for, what does that mean to you that these songs are so meaningful to everyone else? Well, first of all, we were called the Universal Street Band. So everything that we did was a reflection of the people. You know, we were just uh, like a mirror looking at them, them looking at us. They put us here and they can take us out. We're talking about the uh, our Rock and Roll Hall of Fans. And, uh, and back then, uh, all the music that we recorded was actually from the people, the fans. We just picked up a pencil and pretty much we all joined in together. We collaborated with the people. It's all about the fans, you know? And uh, all we did was turn the tape on and give, like Troubadours, give people information about where they haven't been and we've been, like where no man has gone before. <laughs> uh, Lottie, uh, Eddie Glaude Jr. has the next question right here. So I am a huge fan. This album was so central to my childhood and to my college days. You know, the B-side to Cisco Kid, the 45, was Beatles in the Bog, which was my track. I want to mm. understand this sound, this Long Beach sound, I mean, lush horns, the bass lines, how funky it was. Give us a sense of the nature of the music. You, you, you got this collective, but tell, talk a bit about the creative process a bit. Well, well, everyone in the band bought to the table their own style, their own personal uh, 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 style of music. And, uh, and by the way, not everybody's from Long Beach. Uh, myself and the guitar player was from Compton. Long Beach and Compton next door to each other anyway. But a lot of people don't right. uh, seem to want to put Compton in the mix with us. We, we were straight into Compton, not out. <laughs> straight in. And that was us. We were the first band to come out of Compton back in the day. But uh, musically wise, uh, like we just turned the tape on. Jerry Goldstein, our producer then and now, my partner in crime, but uh, all we did was turn the tape on and we, j we were probably the first jam band. That's how we created our music, <laughs> you know, and uh, wow. because we didn't know how to read music and we didn't know all the, uh, uh, all the Pacific technology back then, which wasn't that much like it is today. Uh, but like I said, all we, all we had was just t turn the tape on and if you turn it off, 
we'll still be jamming, and you may miss about yeah. maybe 15 minutes worth. That was probably the best part. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot turn the tape off with us. And so, and most of our music we cre also create while we're performing on stage live. Okay. And we bring the people in with us, and they help us create music. Wow. It's a collabor collaboration, you know. It sounds like fact, a collaboration we're of now. We're yes, we now. are extemporaneously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like a, a mix of, of talent and just unbounding joy. Co-founding member and principal vocalist of the group War, Lonnie Jordan, reflecting on the yeah. 50 year anniversary of the Ooh. album, The World is a Ghetto. 50. Thank you so oh. much for joining us and sharing <laughs> it with us this morning.